So um, tell us a little bit about why you're here at Decentral, what's going on in the F NFT space. But before we jump into that, uh, a little bit of background of who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Ty Greenfield. I go by the mayor and I am the host and creator of NFT and Chill, which is my podcast that I started last year. It was nominated Best NFT Media at NFT NYC, and it's in the top 50 in the tech news category in over 30 countries. So No way. Yeah, it's doing pretty well so for you, a small operation. So you need to coach me how, how, to, how to get my podcast out there. <laughs> I think you guys are doing real well here. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So recognized in uh, over and trending in over 30 countries, NFT Chill. NFT and Chill. And Chill. Yeah. And what does the and Chill stand for? So basically, it's kind of my, I guess you could say, approach to the space, to the Web3, crypto, and NFT space. It, it's just a very patient approach and kind of just very laid back. And we give information and content to people, and it's easily digestible, and it's genuine. That's kind of, so it's just very chill. So... So we've been, uh, we've seen a little bit of up and down in the whole NFT space. You know, when we started the Global Investor Conference two years ago, uh, based two and a half years ago, uh, the whole idea was to understand trends, what entrepreneurs are building, what investors were investing in. So then as a company linked to on our, on our financial management platform, we could buy companies or act or invest in them, right? So one of the companies that we invested in is Dapper Labs uh, that has an infrastructure company. But and we started talking about NFTs about 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. And at that time, there was an explosion. Everyone wanted NFTs. They wanted to invest in them. And then we see JPEX selling for tens, of, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. And those things have completely crashed. Yeah. Uh, as recently as July of this year, we were at the NFT Expoverse as well. And... The environment for NFTs, as people understand it, was a little bit more muted. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, a lot of entrepreneurs were talking about the real value of NFTs. And they started making a difference between the JPEG or the image and the real value. In your mind, tell us what you believe the value of NFTs are. Absolutely. Great question. Like you said, I mean, there was this huge boom last year and you know it was all about the jpegs and pfps and it was just kind of a gold rush and then the space got extremely saturated and everybody kind of thought it might have you know a cash grab like we can get in 5x get out and once so many people came into the space and started building projects and putting nfts out it you know it just there wasn't enough consumers so NFTs as a whole, it's about the technology, the use cases, and real-world applications. You know, so that is what we need to get to. We need new revelations. We need a lot more new ideas on what NFTs can do for the whole world. And, you know, there is always going to be a place for art, of course, and collecting, because people have been doing that for I don't know how long. But, you know, I heard um, on my podcast... Uh, Kyle Tut from Pinata was talking about NFTs as apps. Now, like that's an application people can get behind. You know, talking about we had a lot of issues here in the United States with voting. You know, voting on the blockchain as NFTs that could be a huge application. And the best part about that is it brings new people in, and they don't know they're in Web three. That that's how we get the you know, mainstream. That's how we get mass adoption. So that's a re really interesting point. So it triggered a question. So when we talk about blockchain and we talk about protocols, we talk about all those things that are being built on, on blockchain. The big concern by everyone uh, that I've spoken to, which is not that many people, but large enough, is the UI, UX experience about using blockchain technology is off. Yeah. Would the NFT be a use case of that user experience on the blockchain? Yeah, I mean, that, see, that's the thing. Like, people, 
you know, your everyday person, especially people from a generation ago, you know, I'm Generation X, people be baby boomers. It's, it's difficult to adapt, even for myself. Like, I'm a front-end person. I'm not, I don't code. Um, so, yeah, we have to figure out a way for it to be easily accessible to your grandmother, the average person on the street, and not, you know, the 18 to 25. So, yeah, NFTs is definitely a way to do that, like ticketing, you know, getting a ticket to your favorite concert or sporting event. And instead of having to keep that ticket, that paper ticket in a shoebox where you're not going to see it, it's in your garage or in your closet for 10 years, you have it in a wallet and it's easily accessible and you can kind of go into it and get the metadata where you know what was happening at that concert or that sporting event and you have it for a memory forever so ticketing uh, we've talked about mm -hmm. um, art a gallery and you've got a lot of creators who can actually earn a better living yeah. through nfts just because they can socialize a little bit more make it digital Throw, throw your mind out there a little bit and say, within the next two to three years, what kind of crazy use case will we see for NFTs that actually produces revenue? Yeah. Or is a precursor to some innovative technology? Yeah. It, you know, if I had, you gotta throw yourself. Out I'll there. throw it out there. <laughs> if I mean, if I had the uh, that use case, I would probably be putting it into play. But I mean, honestly, you know, my last episode we talked about NFTs as containers, which was kind of an incredible concept, where an NFT can house not only just that image or some data, but it can house assets. So certain coins, maybe a POAP certificates, it all in one NFT, one transaction to be e easily transferred. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and, def and see the application thing. And it, like, right now we get applications from the App Store. And you know, with the Apple, I think the Apple app, if anything that has to do with crypto, there's like a 30% surcharge. Sure. So, if we have NFTs as applications, they can be sold anywhere an NFT can be sold. So any marketplace. And then it's also on the blockchain and public. So those are the two use cases that I was most intrigued about hearing lately. But, you know, me personally, I, I, have, I have so much going on. I haven't really got into the, like, founder mindset yet. So... Well, so I am sure you're going to get into that founder mindset <laughs> after this conference. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what was interesting for us was this. We had a, uh, a Link to Learn, which is a series we do every month, a live webinar. We do two or three a month. And um, one of the questions we posed to the audience was, the companies that you were, are working with currently, mm -hmm. do you know if they're utilizing blockchain? And the response was from close to 85% of the respondents was like their company does not use blockchain. And so I have to wonder when we, when we look at the world we live in, right? Uh, the world of Amazon, Apple, AT&T, Xfinity, Salesforce. Where do you think these legacy companies uh, are going to go with NFTs and blockchain? Mm -hmm. So... We've already seen a lot of these big names, um, Disney, Mercedes, going on the Polygon network. Uh, old, I think it was Old Navy dropped an NFT collection. So I do believe eventually companies will have to figure out a way to get into Web3 because the thing about Web3 and NFTs and all that is if you have a fan base, if you have a community, if you have a large group of customers, this is the place to monetize that that group. It's also the place to where you get direct feedback and you can give the customers what you want because they actually can have a say in that process. So, you know, I do I do think eventually we're you know, the crypto winter and the crash, 
has kind of slowed things down. But, you know, we're weeding out the bad actors. We're weeding out the people who aren't here for the right reasons. And just like this conference here, Decentral, um, serious people are here. Builders are here. And it's a builder's market. I know people keep saying it, but, you know, right now, everything for the next three to five years is being built right now. So, so uh, all your listeners out there, just keep in mind what I said. We're building now for the next three or five years. So don't go crazy with the money that you have left, if you do have anything left, and I'm sure you do. Um, keep some of that reserved because things are being built uh, right now that's going to be beneficial. I'm, I'm curious to know, Ty, as we look at your global reach with your podcast and uh, recognized in 30 different countries. Uh, so the content you're sharing is pretty relevant. Uh, so I'd like you to share the name of that podcast so that everybody else hears it. Um, the, tell me about the feedback that you're perhaps getting from the global community of what they believe this current economic crisis or situation and how are they feeling about that? Yeah, so the podcast is called <coughs> NFT and Chill. And, you know, right now, what I preach to my listeners, I can preach, but what I, what I try and tell my listeners is, you know, there's a lot happening right now and you just really can't be emotional about it, when, especially when it comes to investing and trading. Because what's happening right now it seems if you're watching tickers, if you're watching price points, the average person, the retail investor, they trade and invest on emotions. And that is probably the worst thing you can do. Because if you believe in something like, let's say, Ethereum, if you believe in Ethereum, in the creator of Ethereum, the people behind it, the white paper, the future of it, then the price right now shouldn't matter. It's what, what is Ethereum going to do in two years, in three years, in five years? So, you know, never invest with money you don't have. Never invest with money you can't afford to lose. And just try and keep your conviction. That, that's what it's about. And just take the emotions out of it. So, NFT is here to stay? Oh, yeah. Web3, NFT, cryptocurrency, DeFi. It's all here to stay. And, and DeFi is an example. Like, we've seen what centralized finance is, has done. I mean, 3 Arrow Capital, Voyager, FTX. That's why, and, and through all of this, all of the turmoil, all of the crashes, the decentralized exchanges like Curve, One Inch, um, what's the big one? Uh, Uniswap, yeah. they've all done well. There hasn't been any issues. And so that should tell you right there, decentralization is what we need, but we need real decentralization. There's so much decentralization that people are saying is decentralized, but it's not. So uh, I'm hoping for more decentralization. Okay. So a curveball from the decentralization topic yeah. versus centralization. Mm -hmm. What's going on in China today? Oh, man. So as far as China, um, that is a topic that I, I can't speak on too much because I haven't really got into it. I guess, could you give me a... Yeah, so when we talk about decentralization mm -hmm. and centralization, do you, you look at a country like China and what's happening today. It's mm -hmm. never, ever happened before, but mass demonstrations on the streets by students and, and individuals saying, hey, two things. One is that COVID restrictions are very restrictive. Mm -hmm. And two, the government is not um, really paying attention to the needs of the individual. Yeah. And so uh, China being a very centralized, autocratic community, Absolutely. we are starting to think that if we're all going decentral in everything that we do, mm -hmm. politically, and I picked on China just because that's the news this morning, sure. but it could be any country that is governed and ruled by auto autocracy and yeah. centralization, right? So, you know, it's, will, will they loosen controls? Will they, uh, basically this is a philosoph philosophical question. Mm -hmm. 
as we see a population of 8 billion people going towards 9, do we see more decentralization and how does that play out? Yeah, so um, my flight got in at like 3 a.m. So I didn't, I didn't really have a time to catch what's going on in the news. But um, yeah, I do think we get more decentralized because, you know, even here in, in, in the United States, um, look at what the politicians and our centralized government has done with the banking industry, the housing market. Uh, you know, it's just the people need to have more say and because I just I, I believe so much in decentralization that's why I'm here I'm about taking out the middlemen and these small groups of people that are controlling what you and I see like why aren't we controlling that you know if when a creator creates content why don't they have the yeah you know right, I'm rights. about ownership yep. I'm about transfer yep. of ownership and decentralization that's what we need so <laughs> that's about a wrap for this <laughs> podcast, but we got to the meat of the matter, yeah. which is uh, each one of us individually needs to take a little bit, assert a little bit more and talk about being our own asset. Absolutely. Uh, we're creators of our destiny and uh, we don't want to be controlled. Absolutely. So, uh, thank you. The mayor, NFT Chill. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Excellent. Excellent.